Um, I will really focus in on a, on a few things only. Of course, um, we are working in a team from the JRC um, in ISPRA and the Institute for Environment and Sustainability. Um, every one of the other um, people on the slide will take care of one of the pilots starting now. Um, I will briefly introduce uh, the organization because some may not know uh, especially the role from our organization. Then I go into the one question on how can actually PEFCRs um, simplify your work and not make your life even more complicated. And as well, looking for, um, to the question from Laura earlier, um, do you need to have all the PEFs ready to do an organization environmental footprint? Those are the two challenges technical-wise. Um, so we are the JRC, European Commission in-house science technical support service, if you want, involved in a lot of research activities and as well involved in networking activities. And I think this one here is a very good example for that, not only on the research uh, area, but as well on networking with industry and other stakeholders. Um, we are the commission service, like others, like DG Environment, like DG Enterprise, with a commissioner and a general director. Um, our focus is really on the Institute for Environment and Sustainability to provide scientific technical support to EU policies um, to ensure a more sustainable world, if you can say. So not only with a European focus, but globally. Then coming to the first question on how can PEFCRs actually simplify your life, um, what we found is needed, what was especially as well already um, indicated in the PEF, so the general document is, you may need some more detailed info and guidance on how to comprehensively assess environmental impacts. You need some specific guides for product groups, uh, for categories, sectors, if you want to be able to compare. Uh, and the requirements on data and data quality need to be further specified. Now, what we expect as a kind of a response, what will happen in PEFCRs, so category rules, is that they will increase the clarity and the reproducibility of the results. They will increase the comparability within the product category, so only within the given product category. I think that is important. And, of course, because they are specific to that product category, they can be more relevant on the other hand, you can say, well, you can chuck out all the irrelevant stuff in category rules, which you cannot do on a general level. So the expected effect of those, the PEF and the PEFCRs together, is really that you increase efficiency. So it's not more work. It's not another layer which keeps you from doing your normal business. But it really should make your life easier because it makes your life more efficient. It reduces the time it takes to do a study and it hopefully will reduce as well the cost. Now, how, how, how do we think we, we actually manage that? And that is really by being able, in the category or sector-specific rules, to zoom in on those things which really matter, to direct the focus, your efforts, your resources, um, on the things which matter most. That can be on processes, on activities. So, for example, which life cycle stage do I not need to look at? Because I know for my sector it's not relevant. Or, on the other hand, what of the environmental impact categories? You have the long default list of 14 categories in the PEF. Which of them I can check out? Because I know for my sector it's not relevant. Um, as well, on very often things which are very tricky to handle, like downstream users, use phase, end of life, for example. How can I, for a product category as such, define how to deal with that? So not every single person has to think about it again, but it will be fixed in product categories. What kind of use phase can I assume? What kind of end of life can I assume? We cannot do that in the general PEF document, but you can do it in category rules. Also on specifying data and data quality requirements, it will be nailed down in a PEFCR where it is expected that you have primary data of your own supply chain. It will be as well specified where you can live with secondary data. And of course, there will be as well the quality requirements more specific um, than so far in the PEF. So you can be more specific. You can get more guidance out of that. As well, the, the PEFCRs are expected to give some guidance on how to score, actually, the data quality requirements in the PEF, especially regarding um, what you call the representative criteria for time, geography, and technology. Um, 
where will this all happen? Of course, this doesn't happen at day one of the PEFCR development. Of course not. You have to go through the process first. Um, so, for example, as, as one step, you have the, the representative product model. Another step, you have a PEF screening. And at that level already, you can... Okay, I can't point, but um, you can see that the PEF screening already will come up with the most relevant life cycle stages, the most relevant processes. And you have then, once you have a draft PEFCR, you have supporting studies which actually apply the PEFCRs and, and come up with um, the identification of the most relevant impact in categories. So again, don't expect the simplification from the start. You have to go through the process first to have a robust basis for simplifying. We don't want to simplify from the start. We want to simplify where we know we can simplify without leaving out important information. And I think that is the basic for, for simplifying in general. Um, as well, at the, at the last stage, uh, benchmarks. Uh, the PEFCRs will define benchmarks on a representative product. So again, that helps you finding your way in, in your product category. Where do I stand? Do I, do I have a good product? compared to the others, compared to benchmarks. Now, the second challenge I was given uh, was related, do you need to do all product environmental footprints first if you want to do an organization environmental footprint? Now, as several times mentioned, OEFs are a little bit more, let's say, research-oriented and challenging uh, compared to product lifecycle-oriented uh, product environmental footprints. Um, maybe brief explanation of an OEF. It's a multi-criteria assessment of an organization that provides you with products or services. It is also based on a life cycle approach. That I think what is new. Um, and the scope of an OEF is defined by the product portfolio that organization provides to the customers or to the world, if you want. So it is very important how do you define your product portfolio that you want to look at. So for example, for a big multinational organization, you can say, well, I, I want to do an OEF, but I don't want to do it for all my business units. I may do it for one only. And then the product portfolio is simplified compared to the total organization. Um, if you look at it from a kind of upstream, downstream perspective, the organization in the middle is what you would call the, the um, organizational boundaries, the direct impacts, direct effects. What we want in an OEF that you look upstream, um, that you say, well, all the materials, all the energy, I, I, I know I buy them, so they shall be included. So that's a very strict requirement. On the other hand, for some products, I really haven't got a clue what they are used for, how they are used, what the conditions might be. Um, so that is a should requirement for an OEF. So you should look at the downstream but it's not a shell requirement. So there are some simplifications there. Um, if you now, uh, okay, that has gone lost. Um, if you now look at the question, do I need all paths done before I can do an OEF? Um, no, you don't. If you are within the boundary, within the product portfolio for which you want to do an OEF, you can look at the materials and energy, auxiliaries, whatever you have in bulk. You don't need to allocate that to a specific product, but you know I buy it in. On the other hand as well, on, on the downstream side, if I know I have three products, A, B, C, but they all go a similar way, I don't need to bother whether it's product A, B, or C. Again, I can look at them at a bulk. It becomes only important that I allocate and assign correctly things where I have products in my product portfolio where I want to do an OEF, and others where I don't want to do an OEF. Then, of course, I need to get the distinction right and allocate it correctly. But I do not need to have a single PEF ready for doing an OEF. On the other hand, while it is not necessary to have individual paths ready to do an OEF, you can say, well, if I have done an OEF already, I know at least on a broad scope very well what I can do with those things, and they will help me in doing paths. So there are expected synergy effects, of course. With that, um, I hope I managed so seven, eight minutes. Um, I leave it open to questions. <laughs>